In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My faithful, here we are, already on the second Sunday of Advent. Christmas is approaching, and we must prepare our hearts as well as possible for the coming of our Lord in a short time. And a few moments ago, we were asking the Eternal Father in the collect of the Mass, Equita Domine, Corda Nostra, ad preparandas unigeniti tui vias. Steer up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the ways of thine only begotten Son. So we need to prepare our hearts, mighty faithful. And the best way to achieve that will always be to give more time to prayer. We must pray, my dear faithful. Pray again. Pray always without getting tired of praying. And this is the main way, the main way to get closer to the Lord and allow him to reign in our souls through prayer. But I'm sure we are all convinced of the importance of prayer. But in practice, it can often happen that our prayers seem not bear fruit, to bear no fruit. A lot of times, we priests, we listen to this kind of complaint, very understanding complaint. Father, I pray every day. I say my rosary, my morning and evening prayers. I attend Mass during the week as much as I can. But I have the impression that I am not making progress. I always fall back into the same faults, the same sins. I don't progress. Why? I'm praying and I'm not progressing. What's the reason? And you know the problem usually is in the quality of our prayer. We are praying and that's good. But we are not praying as we should. In the way our Lord is expecting. So our prayer is not getting all the fruit he should. So the, you know, really our concern or we must really think what can I do to improve the quality of my prayer? And this is precisely what I want to see with you today. Helping us with some consideration of Don Marmion, a Benedictine Abbey, a specialist of prayer, you know, the Benedictines are professional of prayer, we can say that their whole life is ora et labora, pray and work, work and pray. And Dom Armio has very interesting advice for us to help us precisely to improve the quality of our prayer. And improving the quality of, pr of our prayer will necessarily improve our preparation for Christmas. So, his first piece of advice touches on the fundamental outlook we must have in all prayer. Since prayer, it says, is a conversation of a supernatural nature, try to have a very firm faith in the power of Jesus to bring you into the presence of his Father. It is by this faith that the saints in their recollection are always close to the Lord, when we look at God, so great, so holy, we might fear to throw ourselves into his arms. No doubt, and that is why we must lean on Christ. This is the first point. Leaning on Christ. You will say to me, I am so miserable. I will answer you, has not our Lord shown you mercy? Has he not enriched you? with his merits. 
I am so impure. Yes, but the blood of Christ has cleansed you of your sins. I am so far from God. No, thanks to faith, there is no distance. United to Jesus, you are close to him. Did not Christ say, Father, where I am, I want my disciples to be with me. And where is Jesus? St. John reveals it. The only begotten Son is in the bosom of the Father. At the beginning of the prayer, always turn, as if by instinct, to Christ. Since you share in his sonship, in his merits, you can claim to have access through him to the divinity. And this is, my dear faithful, the first fundamental piece of advice that we are receiving. We must look to Jesus, my dear faithful. We must look to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the only way for us to get into heaven, to reach the Father. So, you know, it's not casual, it's not by chance. If during the Mass, and during all the offices of the Church, we are always finishing ending our prayers saying, Per Dominum Nostrum, Jesum Christum Fidium Tu. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every prayer. Look at your missile. Always. Per Dominum Nostrum, Jesum Christum Fidium Tu. Why? Because all our prayers to really bear fruit need to go through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you, you will tell me, maybe, Father, I know that. Yeah, we know that, at least theoretically. But in practice, we can forget it. Forget it. And how many times we can see faithful people having a great devotion to this saint, to that saint, also to Our Lady, and that is very good, of course. But quite forgetting Our Lord. They're praying a lot to a lot of saints, but never to Our Lord Jesus Christ, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Big mistake. Big mistake, mighty faithful. Every grace we are receiving is coming from Jesus, through Jesus, in Jesus. So, you know, in all our prayers, we need to have this fundamental outlook. My prayer is directing, direct, directed to Jesus. And through Jesus, I'm reaching the Father. And if we don't do that, it's like we have an arrow, but we are not, you know, Striking the goal. Because only Jesus can make our arrow reach the Father. So this is the first point. And this is vital. And you will see, oh yes, I'm praying a lot, but I forget my Lord. Okay, so from now on, we always go through Jesus. This is the first piece of advice. Now the second one. Don Marmion evokes the radical disposition that our prayer must have in order to touch the heart of God. And this is also very important. In a conversation, what do you expect first of all from your interlocutor? That he speak the truth. This is what we expect. When we're talking to someone, we expect truth. That what he's saying is really is really expressing is really expressing what he has in his heart. Now, if this is not the case, there is no conversation, there is no talk. If I'm talking to you and I'm thinking another thing, you will say, Father, please pay attention. Pay attention. And this is the same. It happens to some souls, says Don Marmion, that after having recited, recited many formulas, they realize that they have not said anything to God from the bottom of their heart. How distant can, can our spirit be from the words that fall from our lips? To communicate himself to us, the Lord requires this interior application to keep us in his presence in all sincerity. Sincerity, my dear faithful. And Omarmio quotes the phrase of our Lord to the Samaritan woman, the true adorers 
shall adore the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. This is fundamental. Fundamental. How many times do we pray, but our mind is elsewhere? So are we praying our rosary, morning prayer, evening prayers, a lot of prayers, novenas, but with the mind elsewhere? We are not praying, mighty faithful, because our heart is not in our prayer. So it's like, you know, talking to some person and with the mind on the moon, elsewhere. It's not a conversation. We are distracted. And I'm not talking about the, you know, the involuntary distractions we, we all have necessarily. No, it's when we're distracted. And our prayer is not a prayer. This prayer is words only. And you know, in this way, sadly, we realize the complaint of our Lord in St. Matthew. These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It can happen. And you know, at the end, we are, like, we are like a parrot. Not a parrot, he talks. He talks, but he doesn't understand what he's saying. He just repeats words. The parrot. So let's be very careful. Let's beware of the parrot's prayer. And I remember when I was in South America, an old lady, very nice, she was saying to me, Father, yes, I'm praying, but it's like a parrot. Like a parrot, I'm praying and praying and praying and praying, repeating prayers, but like a parrot. I was saying, okay, you're praying, that's good, but let's try to improve that. Let's try to put your heart in your prayer. Our prayer needs to be sincere. You know, it's better to say one word with your heart that dozens and dozens of rosaries without heart. Our Lord looks at the heart, the heart. So remember that. So first, going through our Lord Jesus Christ. Second, really praying with our heart, putting our heart, a great desire in our prayer. Then, Dom Marmion says that there is another fundamental attitude in our prayer. And maybe it will surprise you. In prayer, let us like let us like to hand over to the Lord the whole of our heart and our mind. Scripture reminds us of this great ideal of perfect prayer, where the soul is completely attentive, completely given over to God. This is the key word, given. The wise man will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him, and he will pray in the sight of the Most High. This is a quote of the scripture. As the lamp of our sanctuaries is consumed without reserving anything for itself, so our soul in its conversation with God should remain entirely devoted to the Most High. Let us be convinced that it is the heart that prays, proclaims the psalmist. And St. Augustine adds, your very desire is your prayer. So what is the Marmion telling us? You know, usually when we are praying, we ask. We are only asking. My God, please give me that. Give me that grace. Give me that temporal good. Money, house, car, work, health, all these things, you know, this world. That's okay. And you know, at the end, this is not so important. Temporal things, they will pass. But anyway, we can ask them. Hopefully, we also ask for spiritual goods. Holiness, virtue, practice of faith, hope, charity. Be freed from some, from some sin, some occasion of sin. And that's absolutely necessary to do that. But you know, we forgive something, something very important. That in prayer... Praying is not only asking, 
essentially and before asking is offering is offering offering ourselves to God and I guess this is one of the main reasons why our prayer is not successful because we are always asking and we are not listening to what does my God wants from me he wants me he wants my heart you know we have this little phrase in the Holy Scripture that perfectly summarizes what our Lord wants from us. My son, in the Proverbs, my son, give me thy heart and let thy eyes keep my ways. And that's it. He will give us everything, everything for our spiritual good, of course, not necessarily temporal goods that won't help of spiritual good. But he will give us everything if we only give our heart. That's all that he wants because he's our father. So he wants our heart. So, you know, before asking, you have to give him our heart. First condition. Before asking for this, for that, my Lord, here I am. I want to give you everything. I want to give you my heart. I want to give you my life. I want to give you my family. Everything I have. And then, yes, you can ask. And he will listen to all your prayers, infallibly, because you gave him everything. And we can see a, a clear example of that, you know. In Our Lady, or the Lady in the wedding of Cana, and you remember Our Lady seeing, oh, there is a problem. No more wine. They have no more wine. What did she do? Only saying that to our Lord, they don't have wine anymore. Nothing more. And what happened? Jesus listened to her immediately. And she kind of forced him to make the miracle. The Holy Scripture tells us. Why? Because Our Lady was permanently offering herself completely to God, to her Son. So Jesus cannot refuse anything. And this is the secret of the effectiveness of our prayer. We need to give everything to our, our Lord, our heart. And we will see all our prayers realized. But there is a condition, and this is the last piece of advice of Don Marmion. You know, giving to God our heart requires modification. This movement of ascent towards God is only possible Thanks to interior freedom. Let us therefore take care to free yourself from preoccupations, vain thoughts, and above all from the lusts that drag the soul to the earth and prevent it from being completely given to its Lord. And we can say this is the last condition for a prayer to be infallible. This offering, this interior offering of ourselves, we need to Show it concretely to our Lord through mortification, cutting, cutting in our life all that we need to cut to really offer our heart to our Lord. And this is not easy. So now we understand, I guess, all the different aspects that our prayer needs to have so that it can be really successful. First, my dear faithful, praying through our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, it's not an opposition to the special prayer we can have to the saint, to the other, to our lady, of course, of course. And we can go through Jesus, through, Le through Mary, through Mary get to Jesus, through Jesus we get to the Father, of course, this is perfect. But never forget Jesus. He's the center, he's our life, he's everything for us. So always go through Jesus in your prayers. Condition number one. Then pray from the depth of your soul, my dear faithful. Sincerely, just look at the cross, look at Jesus. Talk to him when he will be in your heart. He's already in your heart with the grace, but he will be substantially in your heart during the Holy Communion. Talk to him with your heart, with the bottom of your heart. My Lord, here I am. Give me what I need. One little word is better than 
dozen and dozen of words, parrots words. Also remember, offer yourself before asking. My God, my God, take me, take everything, I'm yours. You know, we're always asking and asking and asking and asking. And when are we offering ourselves? So this is the same for you, my dear parents. You have children and your children are asking, Mommy, I, I want that. Mommy, Daddy, I want that. I want that. I want this. I want food. I want this toy. I want something. Okay, that's normal. But when are you more happy, happier? When they're asking, when they're offering. May I help you? Oh, yes, that's good. Finally, you want to give something. And this is the same for our Lord. If you offer yourself, we just enlighten his day. He will be so happy that he will give everything for you. He will give you everything. So let's offer ourselves first. And then ask. Ask whatever you need. Temporal goods, but especially spiritual goods. And finally, remember. The mortification <clears throat> will be always the key for you to offer yourself completely. In the extent of your mortification, in this extent, you will be able to offer your heart to Jesus. And you will be like forced to listen to your prayers. As Mother Mary, and he, co he couldn't refuse anything to her because she was always offering herself totally, completely. And if we do that, if we go through our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray from the depth of our soul, we pray with the great desire to offer ourselves to God, accompanied with the spirit of mortification, then we will have the joy of seeing the words of our Lord verified on us. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.